it's just a little bit with the internet, right? We had uh, this huge bubble and then literally, I mean, I remember it when I had my own company, people approached me and said, so I think that's it, right? The internet is just a temporary phenomenon, so it will disappear again. And we see that uh, the whole thing came a little bit differently and I think we will see a very similar development also in the, in the crypto space. Cheers guys for watching Crypto Nights. And once again, don't forget to check out our awesome community app, where as you can see as of now, I have forecasted correctly. But the issue is there are 23 hours left. Check it out. Dear crypto community and blockchain buddies across the globe, welcome back to a special edition of Crypto Nights. Crypto Nights on the road, here live from the Tech Park 2020 conference in Davos. And today we have a really cool and important personality in the crypto finance space. Mark Berniger, a pleasure to have you, my friend. Hi there. How are you doing today? Good, all good. Fantastic. Nice to be here. It's awesome to have you, especially having some really key people in Switzerland who are really pushing the space forward. You're on many panels, you get many talks, you're a serial entrepreneur, you've achieved a lot. So thank you so much for your contribution. Yeah, pleasure to be here. <laughs> so very first off, I'd love to know, um, there's one thing, Mark, uh, you were in fintech for a while now, but then you kind of decided to get interested in crypto finance. Uh, why do you think crypto plays an important role? Can you give us a high level picture? Yeah. Of, yeah. yeah, I mean, my background, I'm originally a tech entrepreneur, right? So I founded my first internet company uh, 20 years ago in 1999. And that's why since then I'm always interested in new technologies. That's what drives me. and. After I had uh, two of my own companies acquired and started to move more on to, into the investment side, I uh, explored Bitcoin uh, in 2012, not as a speculator or investor, but as a tech guy who was just interested in uh, new technology. And since then, uh, I'm yeah in, in it and I'm following it and I still try to understand uh, everything because it goes so deep into details. But uh, yeah, literally I came into this whole space because I'm interested in technology. Oh, well, thank you so much for that. And it's, in terms of Bitcoin itself, was there anything in particular that you really liked that got your attention? You're like, okay, I'm going in. Yeah, I mean, originally, I mean, I'm a very liberal, close to libertarian person. So the idea behind Bitcoin is definitely very appealing to have a non-government backed, decentralized new way of transferring assets and values. So that was what, besides the tech behind, stroke me. And I mean, especially in uh, difficult days like we have right now, I think we have not a very sustainable economic system at the moment. Uh, it is literally quite obvious that you have to look into alternatives. And I think that uh, I'm definitely on the side that uh, I like blockchain, but for me, Bitcoin is the exciting thing. Bitcoin is the single most relevant use case of blockchain at the moment. And I think the importance of Bitcoin will become far more relevant in the next uh, few years. That's very, very exciting. And since you're based here in Switzerland, you know, a lot of people talk about Switzerland being the most <clears throat> crypto friendly nation on the planet. And, you know, Switzerland, Switzerland has done this. Switzerland has achieved this. How are you feeling so far in terms of Switzerland contributing to this? Society. Yeah, I think, I mean, ultimately the Swiss economic and political system is uh, decentralized, right? So we have a direct democratic system, we have three layers, literally the towns, the cantons and the government. So by nature, Swiss people are somehow, even perhaps by not realizing it, uh, yeah, used to a decentralized system. And that might be one of the reasons why uh, the whole blockchain space and especially the cryptocurrency space is so uh yeah lively we and endorsed here and uh, on the other side i think we have a liberal approach so instead of just defining rules before having something happening it's rather the opposite so we see uh, new emerging technologies and then we perhaps try to regulate it so i think these are a few of the ingredients which made uh, the whole cryptocurrency space so uh, appealing here in Switzerland. That's fantastic. So it's really at the core, right? It's the, the, the philosophy in Switzerland, the mindset, the principles, values just blend perfectly with the blockchain. And I think so. And I mean, it's also not uh, very surprising that you have till the top level politicians endorsing it. 
I mean, we had a conference two years ago in St. Moritz where the Federal Council back then uh, promoted or announced the term Crypto Nation Switzerland, which was a very bold move. Uh, also went quite quite uh, big in the press and uh, that shows a little bit that uh, from entrepreneurs, from investors, from politicians, from policy makers, we have just a very open-minded and liberal system. Very open-minded. I love it here. It's very neutral and peaceful. And so I have a question related to the FINMA. Like these days, like uh, a lot of people, when you talk about crypto regulation, everyone is again, once again, praising Switzerland, saying that the FINMA had a very forward thinking mindset and very open. Uh, do you agree with those type of statements? Or are you also proud? Yeah, definitely. I mean, and that's not cryptocurrency related, right? I think we just have a very pragmatic regulator. I mean, it's clearly defined what they have to do and what they don't have to care about. And that's why not just in uh, crypto, in general, in uh, new tech and fintech, I think a uh, regulator in Switzerland just understood that the whole space, the financial services space is changing. I think it's changing quite dramatically. And if the regulator is not somehow adapting to these new realities, I think uh, it's not helping the existing market, especially also not the end customer. And I think that's a little bit the main uh, function of a regulator, right? Like FIMA, right? Yeah, it's fantastic. Many people say that their guidelines, their white paper, they all say it's a masterpiece. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, it's interesting to see, I would say, in other spaces and uh, sectors of, 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 of the tech uh, part. Uh, we are definitely not uh, leading in Switzerland, but in this uh, yeah, crypto related uh, industry, it seems that we're definitely ahead of, uh, of, of, of most jurisdiction even perhaps we're at the moment leading the whole space right and that's why we have a very big inflow of talent and smart people with very entrepreneurial and passion mindsets and they move to switzerland to start and grow their businesses here which is uh, great for everybody i would say and speaking of intelligent people, Crypto Valley has played a huge role in kind of spreading the word. But if you don't mind telling us, you know, about Switzerland in general, the differences between Zug, Zurich and Geneva, have you seen any, noticed any trends or? Yeah, I mean, in general, that's not a secret, right? I mean, we have a few of the really, really early movers and shakers, uh, the, the core developers of, of Bitcoin. I mean, the core of Ethereum, literally, uh, yeah starting in Souk, right? I mean, the Ethereum Foundation is still uh, based in Souk. So the early movers and shakers of this industry, they had close ties to Switzerland also because of the liberal and open-minded uh, regulatory framework. And I think uh, out of Souk, which is called the Crypto Valley, I think we have now, as I mentioned, more like a crypto nation. I think it matters uh, far less if you do something in the Western part in Ticino or in the German speaking part, it's now really about the whole ecosystem. I think the concentration in Zug is still quite unique. I mean, it's fascinating to see big VCs from uh, Silicon Valley flying to Zurich, then taking the train to Zug and then somehow searching for this crypto valley, right? Normally it's the opposite. You try to <laughs> find the Silicon Valley. Yeah. So that's definitely quite unique, right? And I think we, yeah, at the moment, uh, I mean, the whole thing is becoming far more serious so I think it doesn't really matter from where you you start the business that's fantastic so one of the big topics in the United States is kind of when ETF when ETF you know and in terms of Switzerland of course Switzerland has really strong background in finance do you see interest in terms of institutional investors or are there still a few barriers that we need to break through in order to really get everyone involved including the traditional finance players yeah, I mean, it, it's starting, right? I mean, it's uh, completely different than uh, two or three years ago where you mainly had crypto wealth going in and out. Now you really have first institutionals uh, looking quite closely into the space, mostly on the sidelines still. But I mean, there are a few really big and also famous names without really knowing it, which are already uh, invested. And I think like everywhere else, it just needs some more time. I mean, literally, we're talking about the technology, which is just a few years old. We talk about the emerging asset class, which is literally was unexisting uh, 12 years ago. Right. So that's why it just needs some time. It's about education. You have to understand it. You have to overcome all the cliches and the 
let's say, bad press, which is still related to some of the ICOs happening uh, a few years ago. So I think it's just a little bit with the internet, right? We had uh, this huge bubble and then literally, I mean, I remember it when I had my own company, people approached me and said, so I think that's it, right? The internet is just a temporary phenomenon, so it will disappear again. And we see that uh, the whole thing came a little bit differently and I think we will see a very similar development also in the, in the crypto space. That's a really interesting answer. And in terms of the, the philosophy you're talking about earlier in Switzerland, you know, a lot of people these days are decentralized versus centralized. It seems to be a, a bit of a battle, you know, quite extreme views. Um, what is your take in this, in, this, in this whole ideology of, you know, Bitcoin maximalism, decentralization, centralization? Mm -hmm. What is your overall view? Yeah, I mean, ultimately, the, 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 the most powerful part and also the biggest USP of uh, digital currencies, mainly like Bitcoin, is that it is decentralized and not controlled by uh, existing political backed institutions, right? So uh, by removing this element, you literally destroy the main reason. On the other side, I think like in every other industry, you have to stick to certain rules and you have to be compliant. So it's not just having a new technology and then do illegal stuff with it. I mean, that was also uh, similar in the tech space, right? You could do quite fancy things in the early days of the internet, but that doesn't mean that it was uh, yeah, legal or you should do that. And I think these existing rules, they should also apply uh, to all these uh, new technologies, but perhaps these new technologies enable completely and new uh, use cases. And that's uh, ideally for, for, the, for the gold, right? Oh, that's a really good point, which brings me to the idea of the whole central bank digital currency. CBDC is quite a, a hot topic, you mm -hmm. know, like the RMB, the Chinese Yuan, the US dollar being digitized, yeah, yeah. So, which are centralized as well. So, and you're mentioning that decentralized is one of the most beautiful features. Is that still good for us or bad for us? Or how do you feel about this? I mean, in general, the, the more you implement new technologies, I think the better in general, right? I mean, I think we don't overnight change our whole existing economic system. It will need time, it will need ages, literally. But when you look a little bit back uh, about, I mean, the whole the evolution of money, the evolution of uh, different monetary systems, it's a constant flow, right? It's not like that we, I mean, when you look how the whole economic system is working today and you go back 100 years, it's quite, it was quite a dramatic shift, right? And people back then, I think, would be very surprised when they see how we exchange and how, uh, how we do business. And I think that will be the same uh, in just 20 years from now. So I think that's just a regular evolution. And technology is agnostic. Technology is not interested in politics. Yeah. Technology and evolution and innovation just brings mankind further. And I think now we see some of these elements also in the, in the whole economic space. Mm, so that agnostic part, is that something that you really like? I remember Andreas uh, Antonopoulos talking about the five pillars and being neutral, borderless, censorship resistant. Yeah. Do you like that agnostic? Yeah, I mean, ultimately, as I said, I mean, technology doesn't care if you like it or not. It's just <laughs> changing, right? And uh, I mean, we should talk and uh, go into detail, try to understand and then uh, discuss about pros and, cross, uh, pros and contrasts, but ultimately, we can't stop technological de development and advantages, right? Advancements. And that's why, yeah, I try to focus on real use cases rather than doing some philosophical discussions if it's yeah. good or bad, because literally, yeah. yeah, technology doesn't care, right? So you have a beautiful Bitcoin pin. Yeah. Uh, do, you, do you believe Bitcoin is, it's all about Bitcoin now, or are we starting to see a true asset class with sub asset classes? Yeah, I mean, ultimately, um, I think Bitcoin is the foundation of everything, right? And I mean, when you look at the market cap and also the adaption, uh, it's still far uh, beyond everything else. On the other side, I think you have to look into the use case. I mean, uh, we also don't use just uh, one website, right? For every uh, individual use case, you have competition and new players. Uh, trying to serve the client or the, the, the product or the use case. And I think this is quite similar also in this new emerging uh, digital asset class space. You will have store of value. Ideally, you will have more efficient payment solutions. 
tokenization of, of uh, underlying assets is a big subject. I mean, the whole idea of uh, having equities tokenized or real assets, I mean, that's coming, right? The digital and the real world are converging. I think uh, we are still in the beginning of this digitization of the real world. And it's not stopping uh, with money just because you have banks and institutions uh, protecting the status quo. Technology is literally, as we all know, eating the world. So uh, it's not uh, excluding the economic system. That's really, and talking about the economic system, when do you see the traditional financial markets become the token economy, economy or token? Uh, yeah, I think it's it's already happening in a very small extent, right? But I think it's an evolution, right? I mean, same with again uh, what uh, what the internet uh, changed, right? I mean, e-commerce is growing every year, but it's not like uh, that it destroyed every existing <laughs> business, which is also good. So it's an evolving process, and as long as you offer something uh, better, cheaper, um, I mean, ultimately the use cases, the customers, the sustainable added value you generate will define the success of uh, the underlying use cases. And that's why I'm also here quite agnostic. I think as long as the existing solutions are better, then there's no need to digitize something. So uh, as I already said, we're at the beginning of this whole development and just because you have governments and banks and, and regulators somehow preserving the status quo doesn't stop technology to also disrupt financial services, right? And as long as it's, uh, it's better or more efficient and uh, creating a sustainable added value, I think it's also good for everybody that this evolution is happening, right? Fantastically put. I love it. Mark, you have been a huge influence here in Switzerland and we need you to keep speaking at panels and educating people. Thank you so much for your great work. For if me. we want to follow you or get in touch with you, what is the best way to reach out? Yeah, I'm uh, on the relevant social media uh, platforms. So Mark P. Bernecker, you will find me on uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, whatever. And uh, yeah, happy to uh, shape the whole development and hopefully we have a completely different discussions in just a few years from now uh, because I think more and, people, more and more people are now realizing that it's really changing now. Thank you so much for everything. And guys, don't forget to like, subscribe and comment below. If you have any questions for Mark, we'll try to get back to you with a great answer. And please don't forget to watch all the other episodes of Kryptonites on the road. We have some amazing people from different countries, different backgrounds, and tons of edutainment for you to have a blast. See you next week, premiering every Wednesday at eight o'clock GMT at a PC near you. See you guys. Mm -hmm.